really nice trigger pull. And so I can't wait to get to the range, see how that guy works out, and let's hope it shoots. Well, that plea was from a video I posted a couple of weeks ago when I introduced this Ruger Single 6. And at the time, it was fresh from the pawn shop. And if you haven't seen that video, you can click right here and uh, queue it up to watch later. But right now, I'm going to answer in the simplest of terms, will it shoot? And I've got five cans of blast soda right here at about seven yards. Well, that was blast soda at seven yards, but let's see what happens if I stretch out that distance to about 15 yards. Okay, while you were listening to my oldest granddaughter I'll react to that louder than she expected nighttime mortar shot I set up here at the bench because uh, we're going to because we need to do a little bit more than just see if that uh, if this Ruger single six will fire around. And so I've got a target set up here downrange with four bullseyes and we've got four different kinds of ammunition and uh, that we're going to try. Let me run through those real quick. We've got the Hornady varmint loads using a VMAX 30 grain VMAX bullet traveling at 2200 feet per second. And the Winchester varmint loads also using a Hornady VMAX bullet traveling at 2250. And then we have the CCI Maxi Mag, and those are 40 grain jacketed hollow points traveling at 1875. And finally, the Winchester Subsonic ammo using a 45 grain lead bullet traveling at 1,060 feet per second. And of course, those published velocities are out of a rifle. We don't know what they're going to be shooting, what they're going to be uh, doing out of the uh, single six. But we'll cover that in a, in a subsequent video where we break out Big Orange and maybe a uh, 22 mag rifle to compare it to. So we'll have to see about that. I need to get down and get the GoPro started so you can see the shots downrange as, as I fire them. But before I do that, I just want to say that in the video, in the, in the intro video, when I, lo when I uh, introduced the single six, there were a few comments um, complaining about the way I handled that firearm in the grand room. And so I want to address that. Uh, I appreciate, always appreciate input from you guys in the comments. And so I want to address that handling issue. And uh, if you'll stick around towards the end of the video, um, we'll talk about that. And so let me go get the GoPro set up and um, we'll do some shooting. All right, well, let's get this guy loaded up. I'm going to do the cowboy load. And, uh, and I learned this from Mr. Hickok 45 because as you know, I have very little experience with a, uh, with a single action revolver, an old style single action revolver for sure. And so we're going to load one, skip one, and then we're going to load the other four of our cartridges. And of course we had to do that from half cock, and then we do full cock and then lower the hammer down on an empty chamber. And so that's the, uh, that's the cowboy load. That means that now this hammer, which rests on the firing pin on this, on this old style single action revolver, you can hit this hammer all you want and you're not gonna fire off around. And so, all right, let's see what we can do at 15 yards with Hornady varmint loads with the VMAX bullet.
right. Here we go with the uh, with the Winchester varmint loads. Load one. Skip one. Load four. Cock the hammer. Let it down on an empty chamber. Okay, these are the CCI Maxi Mags. By the way, if you're wondering, I've got a, I'm doing a six o'clock hold, which means I've got the, um, the sights lined up with the very bottom of the outer ring of the uh, targets. And then our last one is the Winchester Subsonic.
Okay, well there you have it. You've seen those guys. And um, let me get this unloaded. And so uh, let's go down and talk about what you've already seen. Well, okay, uh, I don't know what you were expecting, but I was sure expecting better than that. And uh, we've got uh, a four inch group here, a four plus inch group there. We've got uh, four shots here. I don't know where the fifth shot is. Um, but anyway, this is still a three inch group, three and a half inch group. And then we've got our smallest group here with the subsonic ammo. And it's, um, and it's about a three inch group. So I was expecting way better than that. And I know you guys in the comments from last, from uh, two weeks ago, were talking about the accuracy, the precision potential of your own single sixes and with 22 mag. And it was way, way better than what we're seeing here at 15 yards. And, um, and so I had done a lot of soul searching and a lot of investigation off camera over the last couple of weeks. And I think I have discovered what the problem is and it came from the factory that way. And so uh, let's head back up to the bench and I'll try to show you uh, what's going on that I believe is causing this. And I think Ruger agrees with me. And, uh, and it has to do with the business end of that barrel. Okay, we're here in the house at the reloading bench. And I have just spun that cylinder more than once, made sure that there are no, no loaded rounds or empty brass into empty cartridges in this firearm and so it's safe. And so the mistake I made in the video a couple of weeks ago, the big mistake was not accentuating the fact that I had checked and double checked and rechecked that firearm to make sure that it was in a safe condition. And so we've done that here. And so with that said, I do have a problem with the muzzle and, um, and I'll show you that here in just a second. But I called Ruger this morning and I told him what my problem was and what my what my hypothesis was about the muzzle of this vintage 1968 Ruger single 6 22 Magnum and they agreed with me in principle and said if you'll send it back we will recrown this firearm for free for no charge the only catch was that I have to get allow them to put in the transfer bar safety that modification and so I asked them several ways. Are you going to make any other modifications that can't be undone to this firearm if I let you do the transfer bar safety? In fact, one, one of my viewers had said that they would roll stamp a, a more modern warning label on the barrel. And so I asked them about that and the customer service said, absolutely not. I asked them, are you going to modify the existing cylinder? And they said, absolutely not. That if they can't make the existing cylinder work with the new hand, the new Paul, the new cylinder stop, that they will fit a brand new cylinder and return the old one in its original condition to me. And so what I'll get back when I send this to Ruger at a minimum is a handful of parts. There'll be seven parts, which include the trigger, the hammer, and some internal working parts that they will replace. And so at any time that I want to, I can return this, the new version the modified version back to its original state if I want to. And so with that said, I'm going to send this, I'm going to package this guy up and send it back to Ruger and let them recrown the barrel. But why do I need to let to recrown it? Well, let me just show you some close up footage right here that I took. And I think you can actually see that, um, that the muzzle, that the crown of the muzzle is biased to one side. In other words, one side of the barrel, you can see the chamfer where they put a crown there, where they, where they address the crown. And on the other side of the muzzle, there is no chamfer. And so they crowned it off center. And that allows, and that allows the hot gases to begin escaping on one side of the bullet before the entire bullet leaves the barrel. And that will upset the bullet and cause all kinds of of, um, uh, of accuracy problems. And so I was really excited about that. I don't, I'm not positive that that's going to solve the problem, but that's a pretty big issue on any firearm to have a muzzle that is as, um, a, a muzzle crown that's as poorly done as this one. But I got to say kudos to Ruger for owning that and being willing to repair it. Uh, and this gun now is uh, 30 to 42, 52, 53 years old. 
and, um, and to be willing to repair that at no charge, um, that just says a lot for Ruger Firearms. And so I want to say thanks a lot for you guys um, watching. And, um, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you click on that little bell, YouTube says you'll get notified when I upload a new video, which is usually on Tuesday. And, um, and I haven't said that in a long time. But, uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. And listen, I appreciate, the, uh, I appreciate the comments. I'm glad you guys jump in, correct me when I need correcting, and, uh, and uh, give me encouragement. Uh, that helps sometimes too. So, uh, but anyway, uh, I appreciate my patrons. Um, there's a link in the description below if any of you guys or girls would like to join my team of patrons who support me financially. Um, there's a link in the description where you can do that. And as I said once before, that would be sweet. But uh, I appreciate all of you, my subscribers, my viewers, my patrons. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video. I think even the crows are saying, look at that sunset. I'll see you in the next video.